Hello, everyone. I'm going to introduce my latest research on beautifying traffic while enhancing time space traffic diagrams. My name is Zheng Binghe, and I'm a senior researcher right now at MIT Sensible City Lab. Let's directly go to the content today. Time space diagram is one of the most important transportation visualization and analysis tools. In a time space diagram, x axis is time, y axis is space, and the color represents traffic states. Usually, it is speed. We can easily find a lot of research uh, time space diagram in scientific papers. And almost all travel data center and display platforms employ time space diagram to visualize traffic dynamics. From a time space diagram, we can identify traffic bottleneck, understand traffic characteristic, predict travel time, and even estimate traffic emissions. However, when we zoom in the diagram, we will see it usually shows teeth shape, which is obviously inconsistent with real world traffic and looks ugly. In other words, the time space diagram itself is with a lot of errors. Generally speaking, the error comes from the way that we construct the time space diagram. I present to construct time space diagram, we virtually partition the time space plane into homogeneous cells and then fill the cell with colors that are determined based on the traffic states of the cell. So one of the causes is the fact that tra time space cells are usually too large, making traffic detail erased. Another cause is the currently rectangular cell cannot incorporate the propagation direction of traffic waves. So, to aiming at the cause one, we introduced the time space diagram refinement problem and solved it with a multiple linear regression model. I'm going to introduce the work in the following slabs, sl slides. Here, the refinement of a time space diagram is all about enhancing image resolution. In computer, in computer science, it's referred as super resolution, which is an active field, particularly with the development of deep learning approaches like CNN. However, there are two drawbacks for those deep learning based super resolution approaches. One is the computational cost is high, and the other is training a model needs a large number of high fidelity image data. For the time-space diagram refinement problem, the second drawback matter. That is, it is difficult to collect a large number of high-fidelity large time-space scale traffic data, which cost a lot. So we define the time-space diagram refinement problem in the work as follows. Given a time-space diagram partition each cell into four homogeneous subcells, and estimate the traffic speed of the full subcell to achieve the goal of refining the time space diagram by enhancing its resolution. To solve the problem, we propose a two step method. Given a time space diagram step one, we determine the traffic condition of each cell according to a threshold of traffic speed. Step two, for each subcell, we estimate its speed by fitting the following multilinear regression model, where xi is ground truth speeds of cell i and its surrounding cells. pkj is the regression coefficient. There are four subcells for each cell, so we got four regression model in total. The data for model fitting was collected in 2017 on a two-lane freeway segment in Japan. The length of the segment is two kilometers and the total duration of data collection is five hours. The first hour of data was used to estimate the model parameters in this work. It can be seen from the right-hand side figures that the one hour data contain both free flow and congested traffic with typical traffic characteristics such as stop and go waves. And the maximum speed in lane two is slightly higher than that in lane one. We only take two groups of cell size as example to present results and do further tests. One of the group of settings is more consistent with the time space distribution of data collected by real world loop detector. 
the fitting results are surprisingly ideal. All R squares are larger than 0 0.7, and most of R squares are larger than 0 0.9. So validation, we employ three data sites to validate the proposed simple model. This is the data collected from deep, different time. This was collected at different location, and this one was even collected in different country. It is believed such diversity of data sites could well guarantee the reliability of the evaluation and the transferability of the proposed model. Moreover, we do two sets, two tests. The first test is called one to four test. That is given a time space cell, we estimate the traffic speed of its four sub homogeneous subcells so that the resolution of the corresponding time space diagram is increased four times. The second test is stricter. That's on the basis of one four test results, we further estimate the traffic speed of the homogeneous four sub subcells of each of the subcells by using the estimated speed of these subcells. It is very glad to see that the results for all cell size and the two set tests are quite ideal because both the MAPE and MA, MAE and MAPE are small. To give a more direct presentation, we plot one of the estimation results. First, this is the high fidelity trajectory data used to construct time space diagram. Second, we contrast three time space diagrams with, with different resolution and take them as ground truth. Then we conduct a 1 4 test and 1 4 16 test, respectively. Through comparison, we could see the refined diagram are quite similar to the ground truth, no matter for 1 4 test or for 1 4 16 test. More detailed error analysis indicates that the proposed model will not result in large bias in refining some specific traffic states, including the boundary between the free flow and congested traffic conditions. It is curious to know if traditional traffic state estimation monitors are competent in refining time space diagram, although a comparative method that was proposed directly for the refinement probably. Pro refinement problem might not be found at present. To the end, we select the classic adaptive smoothing model to make a comparison. It can be seen that the MAPEs result from the proposed refinement method are much smaller than those from the ASM. It's not difficult to understand that the ASM, which is based on a continuous filter, tends to generate smooth thing results making a time space diagram look quite foggy. Therefore, based on the above comparison, we may conclude that the proposed method outperformed the ASM when refining a time space diagram. <laughs> we have several things to discuss. First, in the proposed model, there's only one additional parameter that is the speed threshold of distinguishing free flow and congested traffic condition. We conducted a sensitivity analysis, which shows that its value do not significantly change the refinement accuracy, turning out that the proposed model is not sensitive to the value of its only additional parameters. Second, we would like to say distinguishing free flow and congested traffic condition is indispensable. In the preliminary stage of the study, we did not distinguish the conditions and failed to capture the forward waves in free flow traffic. That is, we do not observe free flow waves toward the top right corner. Third, regarding transferability, we would like to say good transferability has been demonstrated in the test with data collected at different times, in different locations, and even in different countries. Second, diverse, diverse and abandoned traffic patterns has been involved in the evaluation. 
And then beyond adding new tests, good transferability could be actually guaranteed by the traffic characteristic itself. It's well known that traffic flow shows similar characteristic worldwide. Many existing work have achieved satisfactory estimations based on uh, by simply inputting typical traffic characteristic. Regarding more discussion, please see the paper. Okay. As I previously mentioned, another cause of inaccurate time space diagram is the factor the fact that current rectangular way of constructing time space diagram does not consider wave speed, which is a key feature of the traffic flow. To fill the gap, we propose a new way of constructing time space diagram, which is based on non rectangular par parallel instead of the traditional way that is based on rectangular parallelograms. According to Eddie's generalized definition, only when homogeneous traffic states are contained by cells, the resulting average traffic variables are stationary and able to reflect the fundamental relations among speed, flow, and density. Therefore, when constructing the time space diagram, it is important to make the traffic states contained by each cell as homogeneous as possible. Traditionally, homogeneous RP cells are used to construct a time space diagram, while we intu intuitively conjecture that using NRP cells performs better. Comparing those two diagrams, it can be seen that in the case a similar location, NRP cells C and D contain similar complete, complete process of deceleration and acceleration traffic, where RP cells A and D do not. Generally speaking, NRP cells have more chances to contain complain, complete stop and go process as well as homogeneous traffic. Although a time stop and go process may not be completely captured by an NRP cell limit by its width, the traffic contained by the spatial neighbor NRP cells are more likely similar. It means that the NRP cells are beneficial to capturing similar traffic waves. We directly present the time space diagrams constructed based by using RP and NRP re respectively. It's quite obvious that the NRP-based time space diagram could reflect the wave propagation towards lower right corner, while the traditional one is more like directly pointing down. It demonstrates the advantage of NRP-based time space diagram. To quantitatively measure and compare the quality of time space diagram, it, we extract travel time from a time space diagram and compare the average travel time with the ground true data. Subsequently, we did several tests to compare constructing time space diagram using RP and NRP. One of the tests is under the condition given 100% traffic information. That is, we have complete, complete trajectory data. Another test is under the condition given partial probe data. It's like the data collected by using floating cars, and we only have the sample data for certain vehicles and at certain time. The resulting the results in all the conditions show that the proposed NRP-based time space construction outperformed the traditional RP-based method using the metric of average travel time. <coughs> Moreover, we did a sensitivity analysis of wave speed. It's well known that the wave speed is globally between negative 20 km per hour and negative 10 km per hour. Therefore, we made comparison use two wave speed at extreme conditions. Those are negative 20 km per hour and negative 10 km per hour. The results show that the NRP-based method is not sensitive to the setting of wave speed and it is still outperforms RP-based method. Taking this opportunity, I would like to briefly introduce some of my works closely related to time-space diagram. 
to avoid the difficulty of of obtaining high fidelity digital maps and the time consuming map matching, we propose a mapping to sale method to sense traffic dynamics and freeway congestion. This is a big data mining method that fully utilizes the characteristic of traffic. As a companion, we extended the mapping to sell idea to urban roads and the proposed method could efficiently screen thousands of intersections and identify the turn level congestion to answer the frequently asked question. In the city, when and where does traffic congestion usually occur? Two model, uh, this model estimate carbon dioxide emissions directly from time-space diagrams, which better consider traffic dynamics. It opens a gate for estimating carbon dioxide emissions from widely available low fidelity traffic data. Since the time-space diagram, which is the model input, can be constructed by using rare traffic flow data, such as loop detector data and low-frequency floating car data. Okay, that's all my presentation. Thank you for your attention. This is my personal website, which where there's more detailed information regarding my research.